Chuck, yes? So yeah, we have Aaron today and uh, Aaron has a, a message for us and I believe he's going to talk about um, stepping out of your comfort zone and uh, just going to blast him right now. Just pray over him. Father, thank you for Aaron. Thank you for his heart to bring your message. Thank you that you already have worked in him and through him for us. Father, just bless him. We just ask that to uh, to this meditation of his heart and uh, be in line with you right now and uh, that your anointing come upon him right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Chen. So I want you guys to just close your eyes um, and just reflect on, on, on a time where um, you saw yourself in your comfort zone and, and, and you really stepped out of it. So just close your eyes right now and, and just visualize the time uh, where, where you really stepped outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, so maybe uh, maybe Herman, can you share just, just one time that uh, you stepped outside of your comfort zone and, and what happened? So you were um, yeah. Louder. Yeah, there's a there's a moment in my life when I was uh, just waiting for the bus, mm -hmm. and 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 then this uh, person came to me and asked me to carry her back, mm -hmm. and and I asked her why 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 you want me to carry your back, and I said, oh my hand is it's sore, my hand I I have pain in my, in my wrist, mm -hmm. and I said. Okay, uh, so uh, can I have a look and then uh, and can I pray for you? And then uh, and she said, Oh sure. Oh okay, so I pray for uh, for her hand and she got healed and she was surprised. What happened? Oh. Oh, yeah. So maybe Carolyn, you could just one time where what were you, what were you visualizing and what was the time that you stepped up? Uh, I think for me like the most recent one would be going to Japan. Totally outside of my comfort zone because I was supposed to go with somebody, but then plans changed. Um, and then I was like really afraid to go to Seoul by myself, but I totally did it anyway because I thought, like, wouldn't that be so stupid if we just made a decision out of fear instead of love? Right? Mm. But, um, so I was reminded of that, and then I ended up going, and it was so much fun, and it was so empowering um, to go on a trip by yourself. And, like, um, I think I learned a little bit about myself that I didn't know, like, you know, before. That's <laughs> so, awesome. Yeah. Sweet. So, we're all going to step outside of the conference right now. Wherever you're sitting, you need to go sit somewhere else where you usually don't sit. Whoa! <laughs> oh. I'm in the front, so I'm going to sit in the back today. He's <laughs> back in the front! Back in the front! Back in the back! Back in the front! 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 Back in Okay. All right. So hopefully we'll everyone's comfortable now and in, in, in a different spot and. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I just wanted you guys to just to see. This picture really means a lot to me because it uh, it stepping outside your comfort zone. It, it, it really is where the magic happens. If, if you look at Herman's. Or a little short testimony of how you know he never really played praise on somebody on a bus and somebody he didn't know and God God heals this person and, and Carolyn she she finds uh, you know she she learns more about herself and, and I'm pretty sure she's stronger for it. So. 
Thanks, brother. So stepping out, uh, this is just a quick overview of, uh, of, of the times that I've stepped out in my life. So I'm going to be going to each each each, um, each time that I've stepped out and uh, and, and really hope, hope to impart to you guys some, some of the stuff that God revealed to me during the time of, of my life. So grade five, this is literally the first time where I remember where, where I really stepped out of my comfort zone. It was... Uh, I was about nine years old in grade four, and, and one of the grade seven teachers actually came up to me and she asked, hey, uh, did you want to be in the same class as your older brother? This was the first year they would be, be doing a grade five, six, seven class. And uh, at the time, you know, I was like, I was always a big dog because uh, our elementary year was prepared, like, usually with two grades, right? And, and I never had a grade, I was never in a class where my grade, uh, there's a grade above me. So I was like, yeah, sure, let's, let's, well, why not, right? And um, and you know what, it was probably the best uh, experience early in my life because um, I, I wasn't the big dog anymore, right? And I was in a class with my older brother, and, uh, and I was really humbled by it because I, I really saw um, just how people respected you if, you if you were nice and kind rather than if you were a hot shot. So that was, uh, that was the first time, first time in my life where, where, I was really, where I really stepped out of my comfort zone and said, okay, let's, uh, let's go in a two years, let's go in an older class. With, uh, with older people, right? So in, in James 4, 10, God says, humble yourself before the Lord and He will lift you up. Um, I, th I think this is just so important in, in everyday life when, when you really humble yourself. Um, God, God promotes you, right? Um, he, he's never going to promote you or, or, or you know, give you that extra responsibility if you, if you fold yourself and, and you're not looking at God, right? So that was the first time in my life where, where I was really just humble. So that 15 minutes long. So grade 12, this was uh, this was a super interesting year for me. It was, um, you know, I, I played AAA hockey all my life, and then I was, uh, there's three years in midget, which was my last year of minor hockey, and, and in the first year, I made the A2 team, and in the second year, I made the A1 team. And then the third year, because usually if you're on the A1 team before, you usually don't get caught, or you don't get cut, sorry. Um, and yeah, I, I thought I had a really good tryout, and, and, uh, and yeah, I got cut. So that was, that was devastating to me because these, these were the same guys that I've been growing up playing hockey with um, since I was 10 years old. And this was literally our last year together before we all moved to university and did different stuff. Um, so it was really uh, really tough for me and I remember just crying to my dad and, and just saying like, how could this happen and, and whatnot. And, and I was really disappointed because I, I, I put high standards myself for hockey and, and, I, and I knew in my heart I should have been on that team. but. Uh, as you guys know, God has other plans. Um, I was, uh, if, if you don't know the background, the reason why I have this, this graph up here is Seafair is because there's two hockey associations in Richmond. There's Richmond Minor Hockey and then there's Seafair Minor Hockey. <coughs> I played Richmond Minor Hockey from, I was five years old to grade 12. And, um, and if you moved to the other association, Seafair, you were called like a traitor, like a Judas, right? Um, like, uh, it, was, it was just a no-no. You, you didn't do that. Even if you got cut, you stayed in Richmond. So, um, I knew contemplating moving to Seafair, uh, I would, you know, lose a lot of friends, uh, you know, be called a traitor, and it was really tough on me because you're just, these are the same guys that you grew up with, right? Like, you, you play with them every single year for, you know, seven years of your life. You see them in the spring, summer, during the year, and it was, uh, it was a difficult decision in, in my life, right? And it was really me stepping outside my comfort zone um, to say, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm going to go to Seafair. And, um, it was uh, it, it was a uh, it was a crazy experience and, and it was um, it was really a time in my, in my life where I was like okay God um, this was at a point where you know God was secondary and, and God wasn't he wasn't even in my head so it was but but I know his hand his hand was on it because a lot of um, the guys that I played with on Seafair they're still you know they became really good friends and some of them are my best friends today. And um, the people in Richmond, you know, I, I thought, okay, like, yeah, I'm going to lose a lot of friends, but you know what? Um, the real friends, they'll be your friends even though you're on another team, right? So it was, uh, it was really crazy for me, and that was, a, that was the second point, the second distinct point where, where I really stepped out of my comfort zone and moved to a different association. So um, that, that, was, that was crazy, crazy to me, and, and I was just, when I was worshiping earlier, like, uh, it was so crazy that Dave played You Make Me Brave. As the last song, because you know he, he really does make us brave, and and 
Jeremiah 29, 11, this is like, this is like repeated so often, but you know, it, there's a reason why it's repeated so often by everybody. Um, so maybe, Herman, do you want, do you want to read Jeremiah 29, 11? So Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Yeah, so if, if you look at this, like, I could have thought easily that all my life was going to, you know, the gutter and, and uh, you know, because when you only know one thing your whole life, one association, and, and you move to, the, to an old association or to your rival association, uh, you really think it, it is, um, you know, not your plan, right? Because it was, it was somebody else's plan and it was God's plan. So it was, uh, it was it was one of the best uh, decisions of my life, and, and I still coach for Seafair today. So uh, I'm really grateful that you know God um, told the guy to, to cut me right and, and make me move to Seafair. So um, there's a lot of growth in that year from that as well. Um, you're not just on, on another team; you're going on a whole new different team. You don't know the guys, you don't know the coaches, you don't know you know who who the different teams are playing. So there's a lot of growing and a lot of learning. Um, but I'm, I'm super grateful for it now that, that I, you know, that I experienced getting cut. Um, yeah. So my next experience, um, this is, uh, everyone thinks UBC is as beautiful as this, and, and yes, it is one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. But, um, for me, this is how I felt when I got to UBC and, and also on the rugby team. <laughs> <laughs> Me as in the little guy pushing the big guy, because uh, you know all, all through high school and um, yeah, yeah, usually just just all through high school, you know, teachers, you know, they they said yeah, you you know, they pretty much said yeah, you're never gonna do anything in your life, um, you know, you you're not smart, or, you know, we'll put you with the the special people, or not the special people, but like the I don't know the bad hats or whatever, we'll put you in this. And, and, and when I got accepted to UBC and, and also uh, it was it was super crazy for me because it's, it's one of the most uh, prestigious schools in the world and and you really and, and I really didn't know what to expect because I, I, I didn't have anybody like before me giving me advice about what to do at UBC or, or what not to do and, and playing rugby as well it was, uh, it was it was a huge 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 uh, yeah another point where I just stepped out of my outside of my comfort zone because you know I was I was playing with Guys were four or five years older, um, fully developed. They've all got huge muscles. And been in the Must gym go. like six times a week, and you know, this is me. Like I haven't even worked out in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it was one of the best experiences of my life, at UBC, because um, the growth um, and, and the stuff you learn. It's, it's not so much about the books. Um, it's more about the life in general and how to manage your time and, and how to meet new people and, and really organize your time because. You know, at the university, you have deadlines. Um, you know, you're doing a lot of other stuff. You're in different associations, different clubs. So um, it was another time in my life where I said, okay, let's uh, let's step outside of my comfort zone and, and really, you know, dive in the deep end because uh, I, UBC was, you know, it's was looked at a very um, scholarly school, and I wasn't the most scholarly guy. So, um, but you know, I finished in four years and. Probably I can name maybe two other classmates in my high school that finished in four years where everyone else took five or six. So I was. Uh, so if you asked, if you took a poll in grade 12 about people that you think would graduate from UBC, I would probably be last. So take that, right? So, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was it was another point in my life where um, where I really just took the plunge and, and, and just went for it, right? So what was France? Um, does anybody know what the TSN turning point is? It's uh, well, it's a, it's a hockey highlights where there's one point in the game that changes the whole game. Hmm. So this was really the TSN turning point in my life when, when I moved to France. So everyone thinks France is like this, you know, beautiful, um, full of love, wine, cheese, like both hours. But this is what I was really feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when I got there, I, I, I literally, like, everything that could have gone wrong, went wrong. Like, um, literally everything. I, I couldn't get housing insurance, I couldn't get a bank account open, I couldn't get a cell phone, um, because I had no bank account, I couldn't pay tuition, um, I couldn't get health insurance, 
because they needed like my mom and dad's birth certificates. Um, it was just really crazy, and, and also yeah, and, and my girlfriend of all uh, university, you know, we broke up. And it was really at the point in my life where I, I really felt like this, like everything. I was like this little mouse, like everything was was ready just to eat me alive, right? And, uh, <laughs> And you know what? It, it, it almost did until um, until I, I, I really gave it up all. Like I, I, one day I was, I was I was like, okay, like I was like, okay, yeah, I in my bed, and I remember just so vaguely, I, my dad gave me a Bible before I left, and I had it on the side of my bed. Dad didn't even open it once, and then, uh, and then I finally, you know what? I just, I just gave up after you know all that stuff happened. I was like, God, you take over, and 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 then I was like, okay, let's get into the Word, let's get into the Bible, and. Um, and I was just knowing, like knowing me, I was like so fast with time. So I was like, yeah, let's find the shortest, you know. Book. <laughs> so I actually stumbled on a place, yeah. So um, maybe you guys can uh, go and give your phone with me. Maybe you can read Ecclesiastes three. Ecclesiastes three, right? The one you showed me. There are seasons for everything, I believe. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. All right. Because my phone, bear with me, my phone is quite slow. No worries. Yeah, old phone. If you want to buy me a new one, that's fine with me. Wow. Oh. Okay, so you set one first? Yeah, you, you, have one, you have it on your phone? Or? Well, There's he has made phone. everything beautiful in its time. Is that it? No, but <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So, Ecclesiastes 3, from 1 till when? Uh, 11. 1 till 11. <clears throat> Everything on earth has its own time and its own season. There, there is a time for birth and death, planting and reaping, for killing and healing, destroying and building, for crying and laughing, weeping and dancing, for throwing stones and gathering stones. Embracing and parting. There is a time for finding and losing, keeping and giving, for tearing and suing, listening and speaking. There is also a time for love and hate, for war and peace, what God has given us to do. What do we gain by all our hard work? I have seen what difficult things God demands of us. God makes everything happen at the right time, yet none of us can ever fully understand all He has done, and He puts question in our mind about the past and the future. Thank you. Thank you, God. Yeah, I, like, when I read that verse, like, I, I, don't know what the, like, I don't know if God could have talked to me more. Um, specifically to that, that which, which is the stuff that I was going through, right? It was, you know, he, he really he really just revealed to me that, you know, everything is, is beautiful in, in his time. Mm. And it's um, it, it's about really just submitting yourself and, and also enjoying the ride, you know. The Christian life is supposed to be fun. And, mm -hmm. and I really didn't get that before, you know, that, that I really gave up and, and said, hey, um, you take over. Um, before this, before the TSM turning point, I was, I was, I was really controlling, like, I, I always had to have I always had to have everything, um, you know, everything in order, um, everything done before time. Um, you know, I, I had to know everything, but uh, as, as you can see, God had other plans when I arrived in France where, where, where nothing went right and everything went wrong. And, and it was, uh, I think it was him just telling me, hey, you, you need to surrender yourself to me and, and, and I'll take over from here. Um, so this was like, a, this was a pretty, you know, I was... Um, before this, like before I went to France, like I was experiencing God more and more, but I really wasn't experiencing Him for myself. I was really experiencing Him through like my brother and my dad. And uh, you never really experience start experiencing God unless you experience Him through yourself. And um, this, that's why I was just so grateful. Like okay, like you know, I I, I got into you know I could have gone to UBC again for my masters, but I already went there. I could have gone to New York from the masters, but I was okay, like New York, there's too much stuff going on, I'm not going to be able to study. So I was like, why not go to France, experience a different culture, and uh, go to one of the top schools for, for that program. And uh, another point where, you know, just stepping outside my comfort zone, and God just showing himself more and more. 
and it was literally the TSM turning point in my life, and, and I'm so grateful that uh, I actually took that step to get out of my comfort zone and, and really um, moved to a different country, moved to a place where I didn't know the language. I couldn't go home on weekends or weekdays and work for dinner at home, so I couldn't call my dad, you know, whatever, just because, you know, we're nine hours ahead, and I would have been waking him up at like 3 a.m., or I would have been studying at that time, so. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really the TSN turning my point in my life, and God really does um, have a time for everything. And, and before that, I was also I, I wasn't very patient. I was one of things now, and, and God really just revealed to me that you know it's it, it, it time. So um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Like looking through like the shortest book and found a place to have to be, and it spoke to me so much. So um, just another point where we're just uh, stepping outside the comfort zone and just getting to know God. Hmm. So, um, what happened after, well, when I came home from France for Christmas is uh, our family, we took a trip to Maui and, and uh, it was really God putting it in my heart that, hey, um, you know, it's, it's time, it's time to get baptized and it was, uh, baptism is like, as, as Alberto and Matthew experienced last weekend, it's, it's not something that just happens when you get dunked in the water, it's something that's already happened in you. And you're just like expressing it. Yeah. So it was really, it was really just showing my commitment, you know, to God for the rest of my life. And and the reason why I have those Roman numerals down there is because it's it was the day that I got baptized, uh, December 12th, uh, 2012. Mm-hmm. So and uh, I, I thought this picture was just so crazy as well because that's actually me in a way in the water. Um, and this was a couple days after my baptism, and, and it really, this picture just says like a million, a million things. It's just, you know, just letting go and just letting the wave take you like, um, just like the song we sang today, right? Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was another point in my life where I stepped outside my comfort zone where, you know, I, I, I never really committed to God before because if, if you didn't know my background, I, I grew up as a, as a Roman Catholic. My mom was a Roman Catholic. We were forced to go to church. Um, you would call us the pew sitters. We were the pew sitters. You know, we, we waited and we clocked in at, you know, one minute before church and left, like, right before church ended. Like, uh, so it was, uh, experiencing God when I was growing up was, was really the only the only thing I knew. Was, I, I didn't really know anything about him because I thought, okay, I have to pray to you or I have to go talk to a priest to talk to God and ask for forgiveness from a priest to get forgiveness from God. And it was just really, uh, it was just really confusing for me. I think that's why I just prayed that so far away from God. And uh, when I finally, you know, just surrendered and gave to God is, uh, in France is when I really started experiencing for myself. And I was like, okay, now I have a direct line to God. I can call him whenever. Um, I can go see him whenever. I can go play with him whenever. You know. So it was just, uh, this was just another point where I just stepped outside of my comfort zone and said, you know, hey God, I'm committed to you for the rest of my life. So um, ever since then, it's, it's, it's been a wild ride. And it's been a fun ride. And it's, uh, it's a blessing every day. Uh, you guys just look around, look where you are, look at the clothes on your body, look at what you just ate. Um, these are all blessings. Right? You know, you, so the first thing my dad said to me when, when my parents got divorced was, Aaron, you know how many people in the world uh, have had no parents at all, or one parent, or one parent that hates them? You know, it seems like you have two parents who love you. And um, I, I think that was just so crazy because that time, obviously, I was young and wild and didn't understand much. Now you appreciate it, right? So this is another point, just stepping outside your comfort zone, committing to God, and all of you guys, right? You guys have all committed your life to God and had baptisms, and, and I'm, I'm sure it's the same thing with you guys, where you guys are stepping outside your comfort zone and doing it. You know, you, you, your comfort zone is never right here, and then you're saying, yeah, okay, let's get baptized. No, you're always stepping out and, get, uh, and getting out of your comfort zone.